Some weak life. A little wobbly. Do, 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 do. I should have some intro music really, shouldn't I? There we go. Hello and welcome to Practically. Uh, my name is John Stevenson. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, today we're going to do some more Code War challenges. We're going to um, uh, revisit the one we looked at uh, at the end of the last episode and try and do one or two more as well. And let's see if everything's working. I've just reinstalled everything on my computer, so hopefully everything is working fine. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments or feedback as we're going through this broadcast, please let me know in the chat. And uh, I can actually see the chat as well now, so I don't need to keep on switching back to it. So that helps. And let's see. So here's a screencast. Oh, there's me in the corner there. And where is. Oh, there is a mouse. Yeah, so if you need to get in touch with Practically, then there's a website, practically.github.io. And uh, it's got all the links to the videos and the books I'm writing. And uh, also, uh, you can reach out to me via Practically channel on the Closure in Slack. And if you need a free account, it's there. There's a link. And you can also support me as well. And thanks very much to everybody who's already uh, sponsored me and supported me and subscribed to my YouTube videos as well. Uh, it's great to keep me uh, motivated and keep me doing things as well. Again, I'm doing this all for free. Uh, I don't get paid to do this, unfortunately, um, except for your very generous contributions. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, I'm, I've got a blog there as well. I've just written a new article about Space Max, about raising issues and pull requests. Uh, this is a, the example is for raising pull requests for Space Max itself, but you can also use that for other open source projects or any projects that are in uh, GitHub or any of the hub, uh, so GitLab uh, and other uh, repositories as well. You can use uh, you can use this approach. It's pretty simple uh, to uh, to make a change and do a, a pull request in there. And there's a video that steps through all the uh, processes as well. Uh, and I actually just found out you can actually create a pull request uh, from within Maggot as well, which is quite cool. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll kind of update this article with that as well. Ooh, we've got uh, six people watching already. Oh, thank you very much for joining. All right, uh, Code Wars. Code Wars. So if you haven't already, then it's useful to create uh, an account for Code Wars. Let's make that bigger. Wee, there we go. And uh, and then you can trace, you can go in and view your profile, profile and, uh, and see what you've been doing. Ooh, I'm getting close to that six. Uh, level six, and uh, it lists all the catches. You can go in and see which catches you've done. So we're going to have a look at uh, playing on chessboard, which I've done in a few different ways, and uh, reverse with the reverse name, <laughs> and also there's a pig Latin uh, one as well, which I'll I'll try and do if we've got time. It should be simple, but uh, I. <laughs> It's uh, always easy to say something simple before you actually do it. So, uh, okay. So playing on a chessboard. So we looked at this briefly last time. So it's it's kind of telling us to create uh, a chessboard of a certain size. It's giving an example of eight by eight columns, but uh, in the tests, there's multiple. Uh, sizes of boards as well so it's not just eight by eight this is like a zero column board and uh, and a very large board as well and so it's kind of encouraging us to generate all these values and then sum them up uh, and seeing what the total is uh, the only problem with doing that is that um, uh, if you try and brute force it it turns out that that's it's never going to work because one of the tests is like hugely Usually big and uh, it, it and code wars will time out as well. Although all the sample tests, we can make the sample tests run with the brute force approach. But there is uh, an un, an unmentioned uh, mathematical technique you can use to uh, to do that. And I, although it doesn't say so in the uh, in the discussions around this uh, cutter, then I, I did eventually work it out. Uh, okay, let's switch over to my editor. Uh, so this is already on. Uh, yeah, so if you go to oops, 
Let's get to the repository uh, on Practicality, so GitHub Practicality, and then there's the Code Wars guides. So I've already put this uh, <coughs> playing on a chessboard. That's that's already there. Oops. Uh, so you can go and have a look. You can go and download the code. So this is all part of one uh, repository. So if you, can, you can just re clone the whole repository and then just change into that directory. Uh, and there's a, a specific uh, depth Eden configuration file. So you can use that to go into the, this directory and run a REPL as well. Or you can just open it in your editor and start and, and open the uh, the source playing on a chessboard uh, closure source. So we're going to walk through this in my editor. Oh, seven people now. Ooh. Uh, so let's open that. So playing on a chessboard. Uh, so <clears throat> I haven't changed the depths Eden except all I've just done is put this test path in here just because uh, then I don't have to have a specific test alias and I don't need to load that test alias into it uh, into my editor so um, this just tells my uh, editor environment just to also include the test resource as well I'm doing this just because I'm, I'm too lazy to uh, set up an alias uh, I can set up a DR, DIR locals file for this and just call it alias if I wanted to um, but um, this is just a lot quicker for for these little challenges i'm not pushing them into deployment into live so it's a, it's a quick little um hack to get everything working in insider so let's have a look at the source code practically in my chessboard uh, so this is the description um, so as you can see, what we're doing is we, we, we're starting with the half, and then we're uh, then we're like decreasing uh, the fractions uh, there. So one of the thoughts was to generate the numbers, so we can generate a range of one to eight, and then two to nine, and then we can just divide uh, one collection by the other, and that uh, provides all these fraction numbers because these are all ratio numbers in closure. So the idea is to just generate them for however big a board you've got. And then you add them all up together and see what the value is. Um, so if we go switch back to the tests for a moment. Oops, code wars, there we go. So if, um, and one thing I missed out uh, initially was you'll, you also have to kind of put the, the results in a certain format as well. So if you've got a board of of size zero then obviously it's going to be zero and you need to return that into uh, as a as a value inside a vector uh, and if it's a fraction then you need to return it as both the numerator and denominator so you actually need to split out the fraction I guess this is because some languages don't support ratios as well so they kind of made it the test generic or they've just made the test like more fiddly uh, but if it's a if it's a whole number, then you just return the whole number. So if the game is, game board is eight by eight, uh, then if you add up all the fractions, then you'll get thirty two, uh, because it's like a, it's like an even number. Uh, okay, so. Yeah, I just looked up on Wikipedia what the meaning of numerator and denominator denominator is because we're going to use that as well. So it's like num numerator is the top part of the fraction. So if you got if you got one over, oops, sorry, if you got one over two, then one is the numerator and two is the denominator. Again, this is like fairly simple maths, but it's it's kind of names I forgot. I haven't done a lot of maths recently. Uh, so we got a brute force approach where we uh, created a range, two ranges, and then we were just using this function, mapping this function over. Oops, sorry. We're just mapping this function over both of those ranges uh, to generate the uh, the fractions that we wanted as well. So all this function does is just. Uh, divides a value from x and a, uh, by a value from y 
So it creates all the fractions, so that's pretty simple. And we can then use apply to add them all up and, uh, and get the values. But I wasn't quite getting the uh, incrementation I wanted to, so I was incrementing. So if I was using a four, I was actually incrementing uh, both values, whereas this this value here wants wants to be consistently one, uh, and uh, and so I would get uh, one to eight over sixteen here. So I wasn't quite getting the right fractions. So what I've done is again we're still in the brute force approach, just basically gone back to basics and just written a loop recur and uh, so basically we've got the game function which takes the board size so that's all from code wars and then we've got a loop uh, which uh, has uh, a, a collection of numerators which is generated by range from one to the board size and denominators from range to the um, board size, uh, from, from two to the board size plus two. So this will give us the kind of the, the combinations, all the combinations we want. And then we just use this little accumulator to uh, capture each of the functions, uh, sorry, each of the fractions as we're generating them and put them into that. So we're doing, we're going to be doing a range. Um, we're going to be a line at a time and each line of the board is going to be put into the accumulator as a as a nested uh, collection uh, so let's see let's just uh, actually just uh, evaluate this um, am I running my REPL? I do not think so let's run the REPL Boop. and we're going to run a closure REPL there we go did I install everything? Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, so I can evaluate this. There we go. Uh, and what I'm going to do is put a debug on this. Uh, so it's going to it puts a whole bunch of uh, breakpoints in um, in the appropriate places all through this uh, function. And so if I call it with game eight, uh, instead of just giving me the answer, it's going to uh, step through uh, line by line. So I'm just going to evaluate this. And you can see right at the top of the uh, of the screen, then I've got a little in, in place menu that is the debug menu. So I can do continue, next, in, out, and so on. Uh, and so I can step through each uh, expression just by pressing N for next. So we've got a board size of eight. Uh, we're going to increment that so we get nine. Uh, we do this because range is um, the the end value for range is exclusive. So if you do range one to eight, it's going to stop at seven. Uh, so if we do range one to nine, then it's, it goes. It generates numbers from one to eight. So we need to increment the board size to get the right range. Uh, which we get there, and then we're just uh, yeah offsetting the board size by two this time. Uh, there isn't an ink ink I don't think, um, and so we get ten, so we get a range of two to nine. And the accumulator is zero, starts with zero, and what we're doing is to break out of the loop. Then we're going to check to see whether there's enough rows. Uh, so the, the row, the number of rows in the accumulator is equivalent to the board size. So we're going to keep on going until we've generated all eight rows in this case. And at the moment there are there are zero rows inside this. So this is counting how many items are inside the the accumulator vector, which is zero at the moment. Uh, and so the, when we compare that with the board size, then that's going to be false. So we don't. Uh, we skip over the the first expression and we jump to this recur. So if if this is true, when this, this condition is true, we'll do the let. Uh, but until it's true, we, uh, we're going to do this uh, recur function. So we're just going to go round and round, generating each line at a time, uh, each, each, sorry, each row of the board. And, uh, and then we can do some uh, post-processing at the end. Uh, to to make the result be the correct 
uh, shape. So we've got our numerator and which we're just going to return. So we're going to use the same numerator each and every time. So this is when we when we call recur, it's going to pass back new values to the loop and go through the loop again. Uh, and so we we don't need to change the numerator. We're just going to keep that the same. Uh, the denominator, uh, that's the original value, and then we're going to map ink over it, so it increases the denominators, because it's only the denominators we need to increase each time. For each row, we'll have a new set, uh, a new collection of uh, values for the denominator, denominator. And so then what we'll do is we'll take the um, result of mapping the function over uh, the numerators and denominators and put that into the accumulator using just a simple conj. Uh, so we're going to take the numerator and denominator, we're going to apply that function, oh, this is going to take a while, so this is generating all the fractions. Uh, so we're going to have 8 and 9, there we go. So that gives us so that map function gives us the list of, of uh, all those uh, fractions that we wanted. Uh, so that's the first row, uh, and then that's just conged into the vector that was the accumulator value. So we've got our first row. So when we go back here, when we do a count, then now now our count is one, which is still less than the board size. So we go around here over and over and over again. And uh, we create a new set of, a new collection of uh, fractions. And um, you might notice in here, like especially at the end, uh, the last result, four over five, that doesn't seem to be the right sequence uh, of numbers. It should be 10 over eight. Uh, but what, uh, what Clojure is doing is reducing the ratio down to the smallest possible ratio. So 4 over 5 is the same value as 8 over 10. But uh, it, it's, I guess it's more optimal to have the smallest value you can do. So it's, it's reducing the value to the, the lowest possible fraction it can make from each one. Ooh, 9 years. Ooh, there you go. Uh, so that did confuse me at first, but then I remembered what it, what it was doing. So that's, uh, that's an interesting feature of ratios. It will always try and create the, the nice smallest version of a ratio for you. Uh, and so now we've got row two. Um, and so we've got both sides. We go round, around, around, round. Whee. 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 What are we going to do? There we go. Oh, one more go. Uh, yeah, so we're close. We just need to go one more time around here. I think you can skip over some of these. Um, I haven't learned all the features of this debugger yet. So I think that's all our eight rows. Yes, so we've got eight rows. So then this is going to be true. And so now we can, we've got all our values. We know, now we want to sum them all together. Uh, so that's our accumulator, and we're going to add them all together. Um, so it's going over each row and adding up each row, and getting a, a, a new kind of fraction for each row. And then, so that's the results of mapping that, and then we apply plus over that, and we get our total. Uh, and it's it's checking out a, a big int number. That's why it's got the n at the end of the thirty-two. Um, but 32 is 32 n is the same value as 32 uh, when you're just comparing the values. So we've just got our total for that board, and then we're going to check to see if it's a ratio. So in this case, it's not a ratio. So we can just um, we can just return the total. Um, here we're converting it to an int just in case, but I don't think I need to do that. Um, uh, but uh, here it's just putting the value inside a vector. I could use the vector uh, function, but here I've just actually used an explicit vector. I just use the square brackets uh, to, to wrap the uh, result of calling int total on there as well. 
canonical form. I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, so we get our results. And yeah, so that works. Uh, so it's quite a long winded one. I, I, loop recurs <coughs> tend to be quite verbose. Um, so I was going to, uh, uh, to refactor this into like a, a reducing function. Uh, but I, I give this a try inside the um, code wars to start with. Let's see if this is going to play ball with my cut and paste. Paste. There we go. So if I if I run the sample tests, they seem to run okay from what I remember. Uh, but when I do the attempt, then it's just going to time out. And I tried this multiple times as well. And it was it was just. I think I tried about a dozen times and it still wouldn't uh, wouldn't do it in time because I think one of the tests is massively massively big. Oh, there we go. It timed out. Uh, yeah. So I think there is a maximum timeout. On any of these uh, counter challenges, uh, and, um, unfortunately, it's not telling us here what size the uh, so it passed six tests, but it's it's one of the tests timed out, and it's not giving us the details of what it's trying to test. So it's very hard to kind of optimize that uh, code because we don't know what our end goal is. We don't have a test to be able to to test it. Uh, I guess the idea is to, to hide some of the tests so you, you make it generic enough. You're not just passing the tests that are defined. You're passing every kind of reasonable test out there. Uh, although this one doesn't really tell you that it's trying to test uh, performance as well. So we had to go back to the drawing board, as it were, and uh, try and think about how to do this instead. Uh, so there is a mathematical approach of maths is actually not that difficult a maths really um, but if we if we total up the number of cells on the board and then divide by a half then we can kind of then determine whether it's going to be a uh, a, a fraction number that we're going to return or if it's going to be a, a whole number so we don't actually have to calculate each individual uh, fraction we can kind of just work it out from uh, the result of uh, calculating the board, the total board size, so like how many cells are in the board. Uh, so in eight by eight, there's like thirty-two. Nine by nine, there's eighty-one. Is that right? That's not right, is it? Yeah. So there's like eight by eight, there's sixty-four, and then uh, nine by nine is eighty-one. Uh, so if you divide this nine by nine uh, by a half, then you're going to get um, uh, a uh, you're going to get 81 over 2 uh, so you get uh, you get a denominator you get a, a numerator and a denominator and then what you can do is then just get those values out there so if it's a if it's a ratio type then you can just split them and return the individual values and if it's whole number then you can just return the whole number uh, which is so much <laughs> so much simpler uh, so what did I do uh, yeah so here we wrote the game uh, again and what we're doing is we're just like multiplying the game board size by itself uh, and then by half uh, and if it's a ratio then we just split out so there's a handy functions numerator and denominator as we saw here that will just return the denominator and the numerator from a, a f if when given a ratio type and uh, so again I'm just putting those into a vector because that's the format it wants to return okay oh thank you Aaron, Aaron yes um, and oops what did I do there we go uh, oops sorry press the wrong key there oh scrolly there we go yeah so we get the board size times by a half if it's a ratio, we split those two out. If it's just the whole number, then we can just return the whole number. So here I didn't actually 
uh, bother converting it to an int because uh, we're actually not generating a big uh, big number either so uh, we don't need to worry about that and if we jump into uh, yeah, back into here oops that's not the right what bum, bum, bum. Uh, paste this in Ooh, paste so if you run the sample tests boom they'll pass and we do run the attempt and uh, this should go a little bit quicker it does yeah so this even goes a bit quicker as well uh, oh actually I never noticed it shows you the time it takes to execute the test as well so that's quite handy uh, so you can kind of see if you're close to the limit um, it's doing a lot of numbers uh, Yes, it doesn't show how what the size of the board it was trying to do, uh, unless that's its eight numbers. No, okay, there we go. So yeah, so that works. So it's a simple little technique, and uh, I think I've already submitted that as a example. So I'm not going to do it again. But if you, uh, I think it also suggests now you've got it working to refactor it a little bit. So that's what I did as well. I refactored. It. Just see if I can make it uh, even nicer. Uh, so what I've done here is just used uh, Juxt. I don't think this makes a huge amount of difference, really. Um, it just saves. So you're writing Juxt instead of typing X twice. But if you had a more uh, involved uh, expression here to, uh, to, to work out the results, then uh, Juxt might be useful. So what Juxt is doing is... Um, it's just going to uh, call uh, numerator and denominator with uh, the value x. Uh, so it's exactly the same as just doing um, uh, numerator and denominator. Uh, so it's actually returning a, uh, a function that's just going to call both of these functions using x and return the result in a vector. So we don't actually need to... Uh, we don't even need to put the square brackets in. So we're just calling this expression, uh, which returns a function that's combining, uh, calling numerator and denominator together, or, and they'll both uh, take x and produce their results, and then Jux will return them in a vector. And um, yeah, so that's just the same as that. So it's, I don't think in this example, it doesn't make much difference, but uh, it can be quite useful to, um, Make your code, make your code nice and clean as well. Uh, so, uh, uh, did I do tests for this? Oh, I did do tests, and I did write some tests in this. Uh, uh, as well, so I can test these here. And what I did is just. Uh, I've got several versions of uh, games, so whichever game function I've evaluated the most recent, uh, most recently is the one that will get uh, run when I run the tests. So I go back to the test, run the tests, uh, and test all, and it's running all three, and they all worked. Yay! Cool. So that's a. Uh, yeah, so writing a test locally is a lot quicker, obviously, than copy and pasting them into Code Wars each time. Okay. Uh, cool. And was there anything else? No. Yeah. So that all works. So, yeah, either of those really, in this respect, would be perfectly fine answers. Um, I think this is just a nice, simple way to get used to uh, understanding the Juxt function, uh, which can be quite useful. Uh, and so there's a comment from Aaron. Oh, yes, that's uh, helpful information. Thank you very much for that. Okay, well, if there are no questions, I'll move on to the next one, which was reverse. Uh, so it's. Uh, so this is already on the GitHub repository as well. 
Oops. And again, I've just added test to that. So let's do source. Practically, oops, reverse. Uh, let's just jump to the, oops, wrong one. So let me go back to my profile, boom, 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 cutters, and reverse. B. Uh, let's uh, turn again. Hey. Ooh, uh, so this is uh, what seems to be quite simple. So write a function reverse, which reverses a list or any list like data structures. Uh, so you can actually also reverse uh, strings as well, uh, although you will get a um, a collection of characters if you reverse a string with the closure core uh, reverse function. So this would be quite easy. You should just be able to write uh, reverse uh, uh, LST uh, and it would work, except <laughs> they've uh, they've added this uh, in the namespace, this refer uh, closure exclude. So basically they're, what they're saying is uh, exclude from the closure core uh, library the function reverse. So this is the opposite of when you're including something. So if we go back and look at the uh, uh, the tests in here, uh, so dot have yeah, I've got that in there. Uh, let's go back to uh, test test. So in here, when you're requiring things, what I like to do is require uh, specific functions. I think it makes it clearer in here, but you can also exclude uh, these as well. So here I'm referring uh, functions in um, and you can refer a whole library or you can refer individual uh, functions, but you can also exclude those functions as well. Uh, so you can, ref you can include everything but certain uh, functions, which is kind of useful if you've got uh, functions in a library that may clash with functions you're already using uh, so you can make sure you, you don't include them so people can't actually use them uh, without uh, without thinking about it, without actually explicitly setting the, the full path for that function. So here when we're referring uh, in from closure test, rather than referring the, the whole library, we just said we just want to use uh, def test is and testing functions because that's all we're actually doing. And then we can just use those functions as if they were defined in this namespace already, as if we had like a, a def and a def test and so on, or def macro def test, I think it might be. Whereas if we just uh, include something using the as, then it's, it's the whole library, but we need to uh, put the uh, the alias in front of it. So here we're putting the alias in front of uh, the functions from that uh, library. Uh, and this, this is useful because it makes it very clear, uh, especially when we're testing which functions we are testing from the uh, from the uh, software uh, software under test. That's what the SUT stands for. And so, uh, so therefore, it's very easy for us, uh, for a person, uh, for a developer, to look at the code and say, "Okay, yeah, we're testing this game function and anything else that's on under SUT. We know exactly what we're actually testing, and more importantly, what functions we're not actually testing, and what we should be rewriting tests for." Uh, so that's the that's the normal approach, uh, but you can also exclude. Uh, things here. So here we're doing, uh, ex we're just excluding uh, closure uh, reverse function from the closure.core library, which means we can't use it directly, but we can still actually do this. <laughs> uh, so if we uh, evaluate that, um, uh, oh, we're not connected. There we go. Let's connect that. Oops. There we go. Uh, so we can evaluate the namespace and it'll include, and it'll be using, so we already already have the closure core inside here because it's part of the, part of any REPL that you're running. 
but we're explicitly saying here we're going to exclude something from that. So we're basically throwing, throwing the reverse function out. Although that we still have reference to the closure call, so if we actually uh, give it the full name, uh, closure call reverse, then it's actually still going to work. But I, that's not the intent of the challenge. <laughs> uh, that, uh, it gives you uh, some learning about how to uh, how the refer and everything works, but it doesn't teach you how reverse itself works. Um, so we'll delve into that in a moment. Did I write tests for this? Oh, I did write tests for this. Cool. I am a good person. Um, oh, I think there was tests for that. I think these are just the... Yeah, these are just the tests from Code Wars. And using... So using reverse uh, from the closure, uh, closure core actually works uh, with all the tests. Uh, so here we're just uh, we're testing to see whether um, we're reversing um, a string in there. Are we? Oh, okay, yeah. So this is our input. So input one. So we're reversing a a vector, uh, and then we're going to reverse a. Um, oh, uh, a sequence. And then we're reversing a string. Uh, so there's our three different outputs. Uh, and they all work when we do uh, this. So, so reverse the closure core reverse function does solve all our tests. Although it, it doesn't, I don't think it solves the spirit of the, uh, of the uh, Code Wars challenge. Um, I'm curious, I don't know if I tested to see whether it actually passed or not. Um, Let's delete that. Uh, let's see, so does it run, does it pass the sample tests in this? Hey, it does. <laughs> so that's the, uh, yeah, that's a, that's weird because it, you're excluding the function and then you're explicitly using the function as well. I guess, it, it, yeah, I guess if you do have some naming conflict, if you've got two reverses in there, um, You'd probably have to wonder why you've got a local reverse that's conflicting with the closure conch, uh, closure core library, but you can still do this uh, in here as well. So it explicitly says you're using the reverse from closure core, so that's all working. But we also went and had a look to see how to write our own reverse, which is uh, probably the more interesting part of the challenge. So. First of all, I started thinking about like a, a list uh, because uh, we've got we've got sequences in our uh, uh, we've got this like a, a, a we've got a vector and a sequence and a string and we can all think of them as sequences uh, sequences of values uh, the string we can think of that as a sequence of characters in there as well and um, that's what we're going to reverse. Uh, so I started going back and well, what is this? What is a what is a sequence? What is a list? It's it's basically a, a linked list. So you've got a number or a value, uh, and that's going to point to the next value, and then that is going to point to the next value, and so on and so on. Which is why when you're adding things to a list, uh, then if you're using cons, it's going to treat everything like a sequence. So everything is going to be treated like a linked list. Therefore, you're going to add it to the front of that because otherwise you'd have to traverse all the values. And if this was, uh, if this list had uh, like a thousand values in, you'd have to go through all the thousand values just to add another value at the end, uh, which isn't necessarily very efficient. And and also the way the persistent um, data structures work again that that would make them less efficient as well so with cons what we do is we, we we basically just put the new value onto the head of that and then that points to um, the rest of them so what we're doing all we're doing is just putting uh, we're putting four at the front of the first node and then that points to the other values in the sequence the other values in the list uh, and that's that's really simple and it's really fast as well 
and uh, yeah, as I mentioned, it does that same thing for vectors as well. Uh, whereas if we're using the conj uh, function, then that actually respects the um, uh, the performance of the uh, the collection type you're you're dealing with. And so if you're dealing with a list, then obviously the most optimal way is to put it onto the start. So that's what conj does. But if you're doing conj with a vector, then it's going to add it to the end because it's a it's got an index in here, so one is index zero, three is index two. So it's like an array in that respect. You can you can just refer to a specific point in there and pretty much add that in real time. So you don't need to traverse all the values in the vector. You can just jump straight to the end and add the value in there. And when I say add the value, what we're doing is actually creating a new uh, collection and adding the, the value to the O oh, and which includes the new collection and the uh, which includes the new value and the previous collection uh, because uh, this is all immutable uh, oh yeah so so if we use conj uh, to uh, add something, so if we use conj to add individual values to that, it's going to add them in turn and it's going to add them to the start of the list, but it's going to do them in order. So what it's actually doing is effectively reversing uh, the values because it's going to add one to the start and then it'll add two to the start and then it'll add three to the start. So we get three, two, one. Whereas if we conj uh, a collection, then it's just going to add the collection. So if we can conj the individual values from the sequence into a new list, then that's a very simple way to actually to create a, a reverse. Uh, okay. uh, but yeah, as you see, all our values are in collections. Uh, so we need to uh, get the individual values from each of, uh, from inside each of those collections uh, and then apply conj to that. So whereas we have conj here of uh, just conjuring the entire list onto a new list, that's not going to work. Well, it's not going to give us the answers that we want. Whereas if we use reduce, then what it's doing is essentially it's doing a number of conj calls so it's going to f take this uh, take each of these values from the list and it's going to conj the first one so we get one put into there and then it's going to conj two into the result of that and conj three into the result of that so we get the the answer that we're actually looking for so we do reverse conj then we're uh, we kind of getting looking like something that will reverse our sequences for us And this is a this is like a very common pattern. So actually, there's a function to do this, which is called into, which is really handy. And you don't have to use a list in here. We're using a list because that's the result we want to do because we want to use the uh, the characteristics of adding things to a list. But you can use maps and sets and vectors and so on as well for into uh, and whatever expression. So it will take whatever expression it is and uh, uh, and put it into the um, the new collection. Uh, so here we can just use into, so instead of doing reverse conj, we can just use into and it gives us the right result. And that works for uh, vectors as well. As, and uh, did it work for sets? Uh, it it kind of does work for sets, but sets aren't necessarily ordered. So you might not get the order they actually want. Uh, uh, I think there is uh, different types of sets you can do. You can do like an ordered set. But then I'm not entirely sure if that's guaranteed. I don't think that's guaranteed to be unique. So some some interesting variations around uh, sets in Clojure. But we don't have a set in our test data. Uh, yeah, we just have vector, uh, sequence, and uh, a string. So none of those are sets. So we don't need to worry about that. So we can put that into our, um, our answer. 
So we can just have a, a reverse function, which is uh, yeah, into, and I'm using XS here because that's the common uh, alias for a, a sequence. Um, and then uh, if I, uh, oops, no, wrong one. So many keys, uh, there we go. If I go into the tests and run the tests again with that uh, into function uh, evaluated, then it's running the test against that. So into works just as well as uh, reverse. Yay! So that's quite a simple one. Let's just put it into here just to make doubly sure it's all working. Paste. Run simple tests. Yep. So that's all passed, and we do the attempt. We and that all works as well. Um, I think I already submitted it. I'll submit it again just in case. There we go. Uh, yeah, is that me? No, that's something else. Yeah, I don't think there's any other. Uh, somebody's done a, yeah, so this is a bit superfluous, so you can just do cons, oh, they've done cons there, okay. Yeah, so you can actually replace this with conj. <laughs> yeah, they've actually written a uh, conj uh, an anonymous function here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it does show you what, what, it, what it's actually doing, I guess. Uh, Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, there we go. I'm partial into. Okay. Oh, okay. So rather than defining a function, we're just defining a, a name that points to a partial expression. And uh, oh, that's interesting. And then what it'll do is just um, it'll call the name reverse with an argument, and then the argument gets put into the partial. So therefore, it then becomes into uh, the empty list and the argument. Well, that's quite interesting. I'll take a copy of that for reference. So that's a nice example of using uh, partial. Uh, you don't always have to define a function. Uh, this is obviously assuming you're only going to ever give this one argument. If you're going to give it multiple arguments, then it wouldn't work. Um, so what this, yeah, so it, when you call reverse, uh, and if we do that on a, um, uh, so we just evaluate that, and we call that on that. Then it's working. So what it's doing actually is just, um, uh, yeah, so it's going to take a uh, partial into there. So that basically gets dropped into where reverse is. It's like this is slurped in. Oops. Uh, and then we don't need the outer brackets. Uh, right, there we go. So it basically magically converts itself into. Oh, we don't need partial either. Do the words. Here we go. So it converts it into that, essentially. Um, when we call this, when we call. Uh, whoop. So when we call, we define reverse, and then we call reverse with an argument. It, it basically converts into this into expression, which then just evaluates itself and gives us a result. Uh, that's quite nice, especially if you yeah, if you just want to define something simply, and it's only got one argument, then yeah, that's a nice, nice clean approach there as well. Cool. 
I'll push that up to the code repository later on. And then we've got the final one, which is the Pig Latin. Then we've got 10 minutes. See if I can solve it in 10 minutes. That'll be, uh, that'll be interesting. I might be able to. It did look fairly simple. Let's just paste that in. Uh, so we're basically doing a bit of string manipulation. And so if you've got a string, pig lightning is cool, then you go egg pay, art in lays, <laughs> CA, okay. And uh, so what I think you're doing is just, uh, well, we need to, if we could split each of these words into an individual uh, string, and then we can run a function over each of those uh, words uh, and you would basically strip off the first character and uh, and then put that on the end along with uh, a a y uh, and then you pretty much have the the answer you're looking for i think That seems to make sense. So let's give it a whirl. Um, where's the, oh, we're training again. Oh, I don't think I did this one. I started doing this one, there we go. Um, so let's create a project. Uh, projects, uh, nope. Uh, 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 a bit bigger. Uh, so when I'm creating a project, I'm just basically doing closure. Uh, oh, did I put my? I think I did. A new. Um, just a lib. So I'm creating a, a using the lib templates to create a practical. Given that a domain of practically and the is it simple? So it's creating a new project uh, using CLJ new. Uh, so it's going to create a depth Eden project. It's using the lib template, which is pretty simple. And then this is just the name of the project with uh, like the domain and the actual uh, project name. And. Uh, there we go. Oh, I haven't, uh, I haven't used CLJ new uh, on this computer yet, so it's just downloading all the depths. Um, so this is like doing a line line new, or a, um, uh, so it's using a, a template just like that, and it's generated that project for me. Uh, big Latin. Uh, have I actually installed it? Yes, I have. There we go. So this has created a project with uh, Depths Eden, and uh, it's got the source and the test trees in here as well. Uh, so I can now go and open that in my editor and have it a little play. Uh, so let's do boom, 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 boom. Uh, Latin. I'm just gonna tweak the depths thing. I'm just gonna add a uh, test in here. So the tests that picked up, I uh, don't need to specify the uh, uh, the test alias in here when I'm running it. Uh, and then just open the source. Uh, oops. Uh, source. Which got it? Put that in. And so we've got the source, and we've got the. Do I have the tests? We have the tests somewhere. Boom, boom, boom. Oops. Tests. Right, can you pick that? There we go. Oops. Never been. There we go. Uh, oops, I broke it. There we go. Uh, we don't want that. 
so let's go to the uh, sample tests. I'm just going to copy the sample tests. Oh, where's my mask on? There it is. Ooh, Google. I just copy the sample tests in there. Yeah, so, uh, oh, actually, yes, so I want to get rid of that. Uh, let's just tweak this a bit. Uh, we just want def test is uh, put testing in there as well. Although I'm not using that yet. Uh, and let's have that as, uh, oh, as. And then Piggit, Piggit wants to be SUT. Boom. I could have used, uh, oh, let's just do that there. I could have used iEdit for that, but uh, there's only two things to change, so that's all right. Uh, so that's my tests, and that's my thing. And what is it? Oh, yeah, so it's just Pig Latin. That's uh, all we want. So I'm not copying the namespace because I've got a different namespace in here. I'll just keep my original namespace. Go there. Yes. Uh, there we go. Um, uh, let's just re make it return something. There we go. So that's my failing test. Repl. Evaluate the test. So it compiles, but it's going to, uh, it's not going to pass any of the tests uh, because it doesn't do the work yet. Let's just make sure the tests are working by failing properly. Yay! So we got uh, failure. So run. Is it only running one? Or did it stop after running all of them? It should have failed two. Did I not evaluate? Oh. Oh, okay. And why? <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, it's got two tests, but they're called the same. That's uh, that's very strange. Okay. Let's change these to... Um, Oh, actually, I'm just going to unevaluate this because uh, it's already evaluated. So if I unevaluate that, and then I can rename them, and then they're no longer in the namespace, and I can do that too. So I've got two different tests now. Oops. Oops. I'm doing. So I evaluate that, and evaluate that. Uh, oops, wrong. There we go. Two values. Uh, so that's better. Uh, that's the uh, that's the failure I was looking for. Uh, there we go. And so ooh, we're getting close to time. I don't think I'm going to solve it in two minutes, but uh, we can always do it for homework if we don't. Um, so we want to take the phrase and we want to be able to, what did I say, we want to split that into different words. I think there's a, there's a closure uh, string uh, and then there's a split. Is there a split? Splits. Yep. And then uh, that is going to, uh, oh yeah, splits. So it takes a string and then a regular expression. So uh, we want the phrase as a string, and then we want the regular expression, which we can just use, uh, I think, a space on that. Uh, so we do uh, a hash, and then uh, 
that. So that should give us a. I think that's working. Let's just test that. Right, we buy with that. And then we do a uh, uh, pigot. Uh, and we do. Um, yeah, so it's creating a vector of two strings. That's that's good. Um, uh, so we could split that. Then we want to ha we want to map a function over each of those. Uh, map uh, some kind of function which takes uh, a word as an argument, and then we do stuff with it. Um, we could do something first. If we treat it like a sequence, which might not be the best idea. We could do first word, uh, and then oh, we actually know we want to string something together. Uh, uh, we can do the rest rest of word. So that would be for hello. That would be e double l o. Uh, and then we prepend the first word on that, and then we, oops, wrong place, we add the ay on there, and if we map that onto, uh, oh, map that onto that, there we go, for now, we'll map the words, up to right there, boom. So it kind of works, except it's <laughs> it's now a combination of strings and characters. Uh, so we want to be able to uh, tidy that up, um, and maybe use something different from rest and word. Uh, but that's. Uh, that's kind of what we want to try and get to. Um, let's do that. So there we go. Hello, hey, yeah. Hello, hey, world, hey. So it's getting close. Um, we could really hack this together. Um, the horrible this is going to be. It's going to be a dirty hack. This is because I'm trying to rush this. Um, what we do is by, uh, uh -huh -huh. And we do the same thing for this. Um, is it apply or is it reduce? I'm not quite sure. One of those ones. Uh, oh, maybe it's reduce. No, uh, the problem is when we do uh, LO, we get that. Um, A sequence from a character. Hmm. Strange. Uh, I guess we could do. There must be a way. Is there a way to get the? Let's have a look at the closure string library. See if there's anything interesting on there. Um, what 
Closure dot string is not. Uh, oh, look, I'm using Virgin. There we go. There we go. Closure string. Whee! Uh, boom, 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 boom. Oh, there's subs, I think, isn't there? Subs? Subs? Oh, I've made it too big now, I can't see. substring where is that I'm sure there's oops oh oh thank you Firefox there we go um ah there we go subs is uh nicer because it's uh it's treating strings like strings and not returning characters so that'll be useful So if instead of this we do boom, boom, boom. Uh, actually we just do that can't we so I'm going to raise that up a bit of structural editing if we do change that to subs word and then um, oh how do we do can we do can we do a start and an end on that Oh yes we can, yeah. So we can do a start which is going to start at zero, uh, I think, yeah. And then we can set an end point as well. So it's a uh, zero indexed array for subs. So if we want the, we want everything but the first one, um, we can do, I'm sure there's an easier, there must be an easier way to do it than this, but we can do, uh, one so that'll get the on hello world it'll get the start the e and then we can go to the count of word and we can do the same thing for this as well And so we just want we want zero to we want zero to zero. Hmm. Maybe. Let's check that. Uh, so if we change word to hello. Change that to one. Yeah, there we go. This is zero to one. There we go. Oh, okay, right. Yes. Oh, that looks very promising. <laughs> cool. Um, well, that's pretty good. Uh, I'll just uh, so if we. And so then we just need to put in the closure string, split the phrase in there. Uh, okay, okay. So if we do, whoop, grab that. Uh, okay. Oops. There we go. And then we're going to wrap that with the map. So we want to map that, but instead of putting pink its there, uh, we slurp that in. So we're going to get the pig it phrase. We're going to split the phrase, and the result of splitting the phrase is going to be a collection of words, and then we can map this function over the collection of words that we've split, and we get our result. Although I think, oops, sorry, press the wrong button there. Where are we going? Um, so we did that. We got individual words, so we need to join them together. I think, uh, I think we can do that with 
uh, over well we could map we could map string over that or reduce string over that we can also use closure dot string uh, oops. join I think um, that is going to take a separator which is going to be space Oops, I don't want to do that. Uh, hmm. Got carried away. Sure. <clears throat> if we put that around here, that should give us a, the results. I think. So we put closure string around here. Uh, so. Thing slash join. I'll test if there's some kind of uh, condition we haven't catered for in the test. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, where did we go? Pick that in. There we go. Let's delete that. Uh, boom. Paste it in. And run sample tests. Oh, so the sample tests work. Oh, denied. So there's some condition where it's not working. Uh, is it? Um, oh, is it because of question marks? What's it say about question marks? Oh, leave punctuation marks untouched. Oh, so that mean oh okay right oh. so that's the only thing we need to do to fix that and we're way over time so I'm going to leave it for now uh, but that's that solves uh, most of the tests we just need to figure out how to uh, if there's a we do need to do like some kind of check to see if there's a punctuation mark and if there is then um, we'll leave that in place um, I'm guessing we can, can we assume that punctuation mark is going to be at the end? Um, or even separate? It's it's hard to see, do we have any, we don't have any tests on here where the punctuation mark is, so we're not quite sure what they're going to be testing. I think there is only one, there's only, oh, there's two tests that fail, and they have, oh yes, punctuation marks. Uh, actual OEA oh yeah, temporary. Oh yeah. Ah, and it's it looks like they're separate. So if a word is, um, if a word is an expression by itself, like a, a uh, like a question mark or, or a, a expression here, then we can we can skip over that and not add. Uh, a Y to it. Um, so I'll leave that for you to do for a bit of homework. Oh, you can just do so as well. Oh, okay, right. That's handy. You know, just using simple word one. Uh, that would make sense. Uh, yes. So I just need to add a bit of code to that uh, to to do that. So I'm going to leave that for. A little exercise for everybody to do uh, and leave it there. Um, yeah, as Paddy says, I don't actually need to do count word so I can uh, 
you can actually get rid of that uh, and that makes it nice and simple yeah actually that should still work let's just check to see let's check to see on here it still works Oops. Ooh. did something wrong hmm okay I'll have a play around that okay um, I'll add a bit of check to see whether something is a I guess when we're doing the map we could probably add um, yeah. oh yeah I suppose oh actually I suppose it's, it wouldn't be quite it wouldn't be that difficult if we just add a I guess a simple way to do it would be to do if um, So we have a set of expressions like uh, and uh, then we just return word otherwise then we'll do um, that work word yeah Jesus my fingers are no longer working now. <laughs> it uh, work now. <laughs> go away. Ah, uh, what did it do? <laughs> no. Um, sorry, my uh, my ability to use a keyboard has seemed to have gone away. <laughs> oh. this bit out in the video <laughs> at some point uh, yeah so I think that something like that would work does that work it compiles anyway um, does it work without testing it let's test it in there I'm not quite sure about the sum if I've got that right but essentially what it's doing is I want to check to see if if the word is contained in one of the in somewhere in the set that I, or if any of the things in the set are contained in the word, then it's going to just return the word. Um, uh, although the sample test doesn't really tell me anything. Oh, it's still working. So uh, it's going to pass this on. Uh, no, I need to do something. Yeah, so it's not quite working. But it's something like that. So it's something like, uh, yeah, I just need to get my condition. Uh, working correctly. Uh, so let's do, so if we do hello, let's return, oh, we're not running. Either anymore. Here we go. So if I'm doing this, then this should uh, kind of re return false. I think, yeah. And then if we do, um, boom, boom, that would return true. That's returning nil. So that's false. And that's all. Oh, that's also returning. That's not working correct. I kind of want to fix this now. Uh, uh, space. Uh, what am I looking for? Um, 
Tells you something. Let's see. I'm sure it's there. Oh, I could do maybe can set some. Oh, some even. Oh, there we go. That's. Is that what I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, here we go. This is what I was looking for. So why is that not working? So that's kind of what I was looking for. So what do I do? Should be returning there. Maybe it doesn't work with strings because it won't with numbers. But that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to see whether it's if the word is a um, a question mark or expression, and, I, and then I could just have like a, a set of uh, the um, special characters and put all of them in the set. And then, if if the word is any of those, then um, we can uh, we can just return the word. Otherwise, then we do some processing to make it uh, the pig Latin thing. So I'll try and fix this. Um, we might be able to use. Can, can we use contains? Uh, uh, collection. So if we do. Uh, Unless it's treat oh, unless it's treated as a character, maybe. It might be. Uh, I could be here all day doing this. Uh, so it contains. Oops. I think we did that. Oh, we did that the wrong way around. Uh, oh, not supported type. <laughs> so that doesn't work. Um, let's see what if we change this to a character. Uh, oops, wrong one. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, it's a character. Oh, is that a character? That's a character, isn't it? Or is it the way around? Um, oops. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to be here all day trying to figure this out. So I'm going to leave it to you. Uh, nobody's given me any other suggestions. So I'll go and Google a bit and try and figure out exactly what I'm trying to do here. But um, yeah, if I can get that condition working, then that's working and then I'll see if there's any way to refactor this and um, if I come up with a better solution I'll let you know in the next episode. So thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you next time and um, uh, yeah I could use a regular expression yeah that's probably nicer to use a regular expression to check to see whether the word is then uh, there so uh, I'll have a play around with that and I'll push that up to the code and I'll cover that in the next video. All right. Uh, again, if you want to get in touch with me, then feel free to reach out uh, via the website. Uh, there's all the details on there and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.